Francisco. Okay, you can talk. So, uh, good morning to the audience. Um, I am Ricardo Pardell from Earth Rover, and uh, we will talk about our novel concentrated light uh, autonomous weeding and scouting system, which we call CLOSE. Um, first of all, I would like to thank FIRA for inviting us to do this pitch, to do this presentation. So, um, we are developing uh, an autonomous rover which incorporates uh, both two capacities, uh, crop scouting and uh, weeding using a novel technique that, that we call uh, concentrated light weeding. So basically, this uh, this rover is designed to work on vegetable farms like uh, uh, like broccoli, cauliflower, or lettuce. Um, the main benefits of this uh, technology is a zero carbon footprint. Um, um, and zero tilling so that we are not disturbing the soil. This project has been partially funded by ESA, by the European Space Agency, and we have a patent pending on this technology. This technology has first been lab tested by uh, the last quarter of 2020, and since the beginning of 2021, we have been conducting uh, uh, tests on, on a farm. And I would say the, the main characteristic of this uh, uh, technology is that it is uh, completely safe uh, regarding potential damage to, uh, to people or to farm animals. And as I said, uh, this, uh, this system, this rover, is also executing uh, simultaneously a scouting functionality. So we have uh, 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 we have a system based on um, a dual camera stereoscopic vision, uh, infrared, combining both infrared and, and, and visual range, and a high accuracy localization system, and uh, a set of algorithms that we have developed uh, using both AI, 3D cloud uh, computing, and other techniques, which enable the system to, um, on real time, uh, on board, uh, produce a plant map, a crop map, as the rover goes through the farm. Um, so it's a very different uh, workflow than the one that is, it will be used by drones, let's say. And uh, uh, we, are, um, we are locating every single plant in the farm with a plus minus one centimeter accuracy. We are sizing uh, the plant and we are building this map, which is online, uh, on the go, on real time, uploaded to, a, to the cloud where we have a data warehouse. And then we have a data visualization tools that enable us to get insights, enable the farmer to see what's going on uh, almost immediately. So here you have a visualiz a data visualization. So the, this, uh, here you see, uh, of, um, a broccoli farm uh, with the plants which are in an early stage of growth, maybe in the second week, third week. And uh, you see here a plant map where each individual plant is identified. 
and uh, the size of the plant is, is visualized uh, using a color code. Well, of course, uh, having this amount of data gives us a lot of possibilities on the farmer uh, information that is not available right now. But this, this is not the main focus of this presentation. The main focus is uh, on concentrated light weeding. So Earth Rover's light weeder technology, uh, it's a weeding technology which eradicates herbicides, doesn't disturb the soil, there is no tilling. And this, between other things, helps carbon retention. It's a fully electric solution, highly efficient. So it has a zero carbon footprint uh, when using renewable energies uh, to, to power the, the rover. Uh, it avoids, that's maybe the most important uh, aspect, it avoids laser safety issues by using a concentrated light rather than collimated light to kill the weeds. Uses AI uh, to discriminate crop from wheat and to detect the position of the wheat. And as you will see later, it's kind of box where all uh, active components are enclosed within this box under glass. And then uh, this module is IP67. Uh, we think it's the most competitive herbicide free weeding uh, technique and it's uh, patent pending as I said before. Now you see here our first prototype. This is a kind of proof of concept that uh, we started testing as I said uh, um, last quarter of, of last year and it's been field tested uh, since the beginning of 2021. We have been conducting increasingly uh, uh, increasingly elaborated tests. Um, this is basically a light concentrated, a light concentrator working at a wavelength which is optimized for plant uh, leaf absorption. You will see that it's blue, it's blue light, okay. It uses a dedicated camera system and an embedded computer to detect weeds using AI and then a control system to target the concentrated beam towards each weed. Of course, the beam is pulsed so that, uh, as you will see later in the video, we use, a f um, we use a, uh, the beam on a lower intensity to target, and then we fire a high uh, energy pulse when, when we are on the weed. Um, the, this uh, unit is working at 400 millimeters clearance from the ground. And now I will show you a video where you will see on the left side uh, the rover, on the on the right side uh, a vision of the of the operation of, of the concentrator from above. Of course, uh, it is still uh, slow. Let's say we have a we have a development path. Uh, we think we will be able to reach uh, a speed of five weeks per second, so about two hundred milliseconds per per week. That's our long term target. And uh, each module covers an area of approximately a quarter of a square meter. Uh, this is a completely modular system. So our intention will be that the rover uh, will have in the future an array of modules of individual units that will cover the full width of the bed. And it can be in, in depth as, as long as we consider to optimize, let's say, the operation. As you see, it works in a start-stop operation because our objective is to um, completely eradicate and the weeds. So we, uh, after one pass, let's say, all the weeds that are within the uh, radius, uh, the, within the size that we want to kill, are, are eradicated. Now, why concentrated light? Why this technique? I mean, this is very similar to laser, okay? I would say it's a kind of evolution from laser weeding. Uh, it shares a lot of its benefits, but we think that we have solved some of the principal drawbacks. Um, if we compare with herbicides, of course, well, herbicides, it's something in the European Union, it's going to disappear. It, inc it increases weed resistance. It, dam it damages the environment. It is incompatible with organic products and it's not good for the soil health. Then we have 
mechanical weeding, there is quite sophisticated mechanical solutions, uh, both mounted on tractors with camera systems or mounted on, on autonomous rovers. Um, there is a problem with dealing with uh, ground uh, dis uh, disruption is that it, it, you promote the uh, emissions, uh, the, 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 CO, the carbon which is retained by the soil is, is, is promoted its emission. And then um, there is a significant amount of crop damage and, and the soil health is not so good. Then we have flame weeding, which is, let's say, consuming uh, hydrocarbons. It's not uh, selective enough. It can damage the crop very easily. Its cost is high and, this, and there are safety issues. And then basically we have laser, which has been an idea going around science many years ago. Um, but it also, it always had kind of problems of reliability and safety because you have a collimated beam and that beam, if reflected in the ground, accidentally could uh, hurt uh, a person or an animal uh, at a long distance, okay? So by concentrating the light instead of collimating the light, um, we have a system which is based on solid states uh, uh, diodes, solid states emitters of very low cost, which are used on a compound way. And then the cost is really very, very, very good. And these indium gallium nitrite uh, semiconductors are uh, lowering their cost every year. The reliability is very high because as we work with a matrix system, um, the junction temperature is low. Um, and uh, the safety is inherently very high. So let me explain the safety principle. So basically, uh, um, the idea is that uh, we have here a cone of, la of concentrated light, uh, which is targeting the wheat. If that cone of concentrated light eventually hits a reflective surface, the reflection will have, uh, will also be in shaped in a cone uh, with, um, and will disperse with the square of the distance. Now we can, we have a very easy formula where we can relate the, um, the focal length of the concentrator with the safety distance. So we can design the system and to define a specific safety distance. For instance, let's say two meters, okay? And that's just a matter of designing the properly the concentrator. And then uh, you, can, you can reach that degree of safety where if an animal of a person will be reached in their air site um, at a distance, uh, after this safety distance, mm, there will be no damage because the level of irradiance will be similar to looking uh, for, a, for a few milliseconds into the sun. And right now, our current prototype, uh, we have a safety distance of five meters, okay? But of course, uh, we are looking also to improve that. And then uh, we aim at a safety distance of two meters in a matter of um, the next uh, year. So um, we, will, we will group these uh, uh, weeding units into weeding models. Our current way we are thinking uh, we are going to produce a four units weeding model and this weeding model will include four weeding units, a camera system, a vision system. It will include um, an embedded, uh, a powerful embedded computer which is able to locally execute all the detection and control algorithms. And then it will include an artificial illumination system that will, uh, let's say, uh, um, help control the lighting conditions um, for the operation. Now you see here, the, these are drawings uh, from our pattern. They are partially, they have been partially occluded to avoid uh, showing the most uh, critical parts. But here you, you have a, um, a view of what is this, uh, what are these models, how they are, or they will be organized uh, below uh, an autonomous rover, okay? So here we, we are showing three models. These three models mean 12 units, but eventually we could, we could put uh, the number of models that we would consider um, necessary. As you see, uh, it is designed 
for the rover to and, and the weeding units to have enough clearance to go uh, above the 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 crop. Um, of course, uh, we don't need to protect the crop when it's very very large. Um, so, um, as I said, there is a clearance of 400 millimeters, and then for many crops, this is uh, going to be more than enough. In any case, we could change the parameters. We could elongate the focal length uh, to adapt to other kind of crops and other situations. Um, the energy consumption is very good. Let's say we are talking about 2.47 kilowatt hours per hectare when uh, uh, when having a, a width density of 40, 40 widths per square meter, okay? In the tests we have been doing, as you will see now some images, really this uh, 40 widths per square, new, for a square meter look like um, something which happens in the field. Um, if anybody wants after this meeting to talk with me about these figures, about the economic impact of, of this technology, I would be um, pleased to, to answer your questions. Um, now we will see some pictures about, uh, um, about the, act, uh, the activity of, of this weeding technology. Um, here we have a control area in our uh, testing field. We define several control areas where we are tracking uh, every day what's the evolution of the weeds. That's in the field, that's not in a laboratory. And then you see here an image of the field before uh, we started weeding, right? Uh, now you will see the image after weeding. So you see on the left, the killing area is on the left and on the right side, there is a control area. There has, there has not been any weeding. So you see that uh, the, all the weeds have been, mostly of them have been vaporized. They have disappeared. Uh, we, we are attacking the weeds uh, when they are very small. That's more efficient from an energy, energy point of view. So the idea is to attack the weeds when they are really very small. So now you see this after 12 days. You see that after 12 days, even after having had some rain, some weeds have progressed, but most of the weeds are killed. Now, after these 12 days, we made a second uh, weeding uh, process. And then after 22 days, without any further weeding, you see this image. So you see in the, in the, in the area that has been weeded, where we had two passes, let's say we had an initial pass and then after 13 days, we had a second pass. You see that after 22 days, even after raining and, and in good conditions to promote the weeds, on the treated area, the weeds haven't progressed. There are no weeds. So we think that's a good initial proofs of, of the viability and the efficiency of this system. And uh, well, basically that's it. Uh, I just wanted to share some pictures on our research and development team. And so uh, these guys have been working on, on, on the project. We have been working in, in Spain. We have been working in England. We have most people in Barcelona, but we have some people also in England. And then we, we have here other products that we have developed. So you have here on the top left, a three bed uh, scouting system mounted on a rover. This has been tested uh, for one year at a, a large farm uh, at, one, at 200 hectares of, of Brassicas farm in, in England, very, a very large company. Then we have also been tri trialing with two other uh, very important companies in in England and in Spain. Uh, on below on the left, you see another trial of the scouting system on a lechus farm in the south of Spain, and then you see some pictures of the autonomous rover doing a scouting in in several farms, and then on the left again a picture of the weeding model, and then that's it. Uh, thank you very much for your time, and then I think we have some time for a few questions. You have two minutes left for question. And uh, if uh, you want, you can join after the platform and have one-to-one -one chat to continue the conversation. So two minutes left for Q&A.
Um, so we can we can destroy. A, uh, we have defined um, a radius of one centimeter. I think we we are currently tar targeting between five millimeters and one centimeter, but actually you could destroy. Um, I would say much larger plants. It's a matter of energy, right? So, but it would not be efficient. So our our approach is that uh, w the passes should be frequent and uh, the the widths should be between five millimeters diameter and 10 millimeters diameter. Francisco, am I right? I think this is the diameter. Yeah, that, that would be the, the optimal yeah, range. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, actually this is parameters that we, we could change in the future, but you could kill any plant, let's say. Um, these robots, uh, you ask if they could be used in fruit orchards between trees or between rows. Yes, if if this is relevant, let's say uh, anything which is on the ground uh, right now could be could be with with an, using this uh, system, this robot, and uh, using the basic technology. This technology could be used. Uh, let's say if we put the 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 weeding units on a on a robotic arm. You could actually move that. Uh, that uh, let's say you could target even um, with uh, at other areas or with other orientations. Let's say um, you you use uh, five meters safety radius. The question is, what processes are in place or plan to be ensured no human is within this range on your machine? Oh yeah, of course. Let's say I, I didn't go in detail, but the, in actually. It's even in the pattern. We we will have a cameras uh, uh, looking uh, stereo cameras looking uh, surrounding uh, the rover, so that we can detect uh, anything coming uh, close to the defined um, safety range, and uh, we will also plan to have a leader. So combining the leader with the stereo cameras, we will going to keep the distance, but. Actually, our target is that uh, by the end of the year, the safety distance will be two meters, and it will, and the rover will be configured in such a way that actually you could even be very close to, to the rover. So there will be two layers of safety at least. I'm sorry, um, we, need to, we need to close the session, but all the questions in the Q and A session will be sent to. To record, it will contact you, and then you can go now on Fira platform uh, to continue the conversation in a one-to-one -one chat uh, with the Ricardo and Francisco, if needed. But I'm sorry, we need to we need to leave now. So please conclude. Okay. So thanks a lot again to Fira, my Island. Thanks a lot, uh, Gwendolyn, and and well, uh, we will be uh, in the in the in the room for any additional questions.